Negative thinking is a major problem. If you're trying to be successful or happy, you have no room for negativity. Big thinking gets rid of negativity. Dreams and visions gets rid of negativity. Now, what you cannot do is bury yourself by using your success compared to other people. See, success is not how far you got, because somebody always further than you. Success ain't how far you got. Success is how far you got from where you started. God said a man is as he thinketh. We are how we think. You have got to change the way you think. It is the whole determining factor of where you go in life. We are all where we are today because we thought ourselves to this position. If you don't like the position, think yourself out of it. I do not deserve the good measure that flows with success. I just don't deserve it. I just can't see myself as being in this position. I don't deserve it. This often comes from things that people said to you or about you. They programmed you to see yourself in a limited parameter. And so when you see opportunities beyond how you've been programmed, you reject it because you don't feel like you're deserving of it. I do not want to stand apart or be different. I want to fit in because they have a belief system that holds on to being ordinary. They will not take the lead. I, I am afraid that I will become a target and you will. If you take the lead, you will become a target. But just because they're shooting at you doesn't mean they shot you. There are a lot of voices in life trying to define us, tell us who we are. Sometimes they're uplifting. Other times they're negative. You're not attractive. There's nothing special about you. Our own thoughts will try to label us. When you listen to all these voices, it's easy to think, who's telling the truth? Who am I? Am I strong and confident or am I weak and insecure? Here's the key. The only voice that matters is your voice. What you choose is what you will become. Who do you say you are? God says you have seeds of greatness. You are destined to leave your mark. Other voices will tell you you're just ordinary. You have the final choice. The problem with some people is they've chosen the wrong voice so long they don't know who they really are. They've allowed circumstances to define them. Mistakes, disappointments, now they've lost their passion. The only one that knows who you really are is your Creator. He calls you a masterpiece. He said you will be mighty in the land, that you are more than a conqueror, confident, approved, valuable. When you say what God says about you, then you activate what he put on the inside. But you can't say I'm weak and tap into the power. You can't say I'm not that talented and tap into your greatness. Who do you say you are? Not who do other people say you are? Who do your coworkers say you are? No disrespect, but you are not who people say you are. You are who God says you are. If you let them put their limitations on you, convince you that you can't accomplish your dream, then because you're letting them define you, what they're saying is going to come to pass. Don't repeat the negative people have spoken over you. Imagine someone ask you, who do you say you are so we can tell others? Well, this pandemic has me worried. My back's been hurting. These kids are getting on my nerves. I'm really discouraged. That is not who you are. Go back to the scripture and say what God says about you. I'm strong, talented, favored, blessed, forgiven, fearfully, and wonderfully made. I am not what I feel. I may feel weak, but God says I'm strong, so my report is I am strong. You may not feel up to par. You're dealing with an illness, fighting that depression, it's easy to wear the labels, sick, depressed. That's just who I am. That's not who you are. That's what you're dealing with. Don't let that difficulty become your identity. What do you say about yourself? I'm sick. I'm depressed. No, I'm healthy. I'm free. I'm happy. I'm victorious. 
If you'll start saying what God says about you instead of what you feel, you'll see things begin to turn around. I talked to a man that was so down on himself. He said, I feel so unworthy. I don't deserve to be blessed. Being against yourself is not going to help you move forward. The enemy is called the accuser. He'll remind you of every mistake you've made. He'd love for you to wear these labels, unworthy, no future. I told him what I'm telling you. As long as you see yourself unworthy, it's going to keep you where you are. Why don't you say what God says about you? I'm forgiven, my past is over, and my future is bright. Who do you say you are? What you say overrides all the others. Now quit saying negative things about yourself. I'm so overweight. I'll never get out of this neighborhood. I'll never break this addiction. You're going to become what you believe. What you say about yourself is going to become a reality. I'm just average. You're going to be average. When the truth is, God didn't make anyone average. But as long as you believe you're ordinary, you won't shine like you're supposed to shine. When Moses was born, the scripture says, He was no ordinary child. As he grew up, he could sense his destiny was to deliver the Israelites out of slavery. But he made a mistake. He spent 40 years in hiding. I can imagine those voices told him how he blew it. He could have worn the labels, failure, too late. But deep down, he could hear that still, small voice telling him, this is not how your story ends. There is greatness in you. Just because you've made mistakes doesn't mean that stopped your destiny. What stops us is when we start wearing the negative labels. We quit pursuing our dreams. When you were born, God said the same thing about you as he did Moses. This is no ordinary child. He's destined you to leave your mark. You may have made mistakes. It's taken longer than you thought, but that doesn't change what's in you. Now, the enemy will work overtime to try to steal your sense of value. He knows if he can distort your identity and convince you that you're just average, then he can keep you from your greatness. I wonder how far God will take you if you will just live like you are no ordinary child, that there's a favor on your life that will take you where you can't go on your own a blessing that will cause you to stand out. Who do you say you are? You have royal blood flowing through your veins. What's trying to stop you doesn't have a chance. God being for you is more than the world being against you. That sickness should be the end. The medical report says you're done, but not for you. You're no ordinary child. God handpicked you. Before you could choose him, he chose you. Now, don't go around thinking you're average. You don't have much to offer. You are no ordinary child. You are a history maker. You are destined to leave your mark. Well, Joel, this sounds good, but I think you have the wrong person. There's nothing unusual about me. I don't have a great personality. I don't come from an influential family. As long as you're discounting yourself, you're not going to see your greatness. I'm asking you to get in agreement with God. It doesn't matter how you were raised. It's not dependent on how much education you have, what obstacles you're up against. When you believe doors will open, you never dreamed would open. The prophet Joel said, wake up the mighty men. Wake up the mighty women. I want to wake up your greatness. Wake up that business God put in you. Wake up that book may seem like it's over your head, but you have to understand you're not average. You can accomplish more than you think. You are more anointed than you think. You are more talented than you think. The dreams and gifts God put in you are much bigger than you think. Don't you dare say I'm average, I'm ordinary. Get in agreement with God. I am highly favored. I am surrounded with God's goodness. 